The principles of spinning tops are used in more than just toys. The gyroscopic effect means flywheels are also used inside satellites to adjust their height and orientation, helping them stay on track. A flywheel spinning also allows it to store energy. So what if we could use these flywheels to not only control the direction of satellites, but also use the stored energy as a non-chemical alternative to the lithium ion batteries that have been powering the International Space Station or ISS since 2017. This was the vision of NASA's Glenn Research Center, to develop a dual purpose flywheel battery capable of both storing energy as mechanical rotation, which could be converted into electricity as needed, and also controlling the station's orientation and altitude. The idea is genius, it's two for one, but did it work? I'm Ryan Innes, and this is a Zero Deep Dive. Electrochemical batteries are great, it's hard to think of life without them, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're always the best option. Chemical batteries have three challenges, which can be overcome for buses or cars, but present a major hurdle when talking about satellites and spaceships. This is why NASA poured so many resources into a mechanical alternative. Problem number one is the drop in battery performance outside of specific temperature ranges, like in the freezing vacuum of outer space. A NASA document says that the temperature at which the battery is charged and discharged has a pronounced effect on its capacity and voltage characteristics. This is due to the reduction in chemical activity and the increase in battery internal resistance at lower temperatures. What this is essentially saying is that we need the batteries at just the right temperatures to get the best performance out of them. Second, regardless of how well you treat them, chemical batteries do degrade over time, albeit increasingly slowly. The ISS's lithium-ion batteries are expected to last around 11 years, with degradation happening due to unwanted reactions that happen over time within the battery. A Chinese company called CATL has a new EV battery that has a warranty of 15 years and a million miles. It also states that it will have zero degradation throughout the first 1000 battery cycles. But the terrestrial applications that the EV batteries will be used in make them unlikely to experience the extreme conditions that a spacecraft will face. The third tricky problem is that with a lithium ion battery, when it's operating you can't easily tell how much energy is left within it. There are ways to estimate it with computer algorithms, or you can perform tests on it when it's not in operation. But these are modern discoveries, and getting a good idea of the energy in a mechanical flywheel battery is as easy as just measuring its speed. I'm sure you can see the appeal of a mechanical battery that could operate in space without any of these challenges. Flywheel energy storage systems are unlikely to make the list of up and coming battery technologies threatening the dominance of lithium ion. But what's fascinating to see is how NASA took mechanical batteries to a whole new level, reinventing the flywheel. But before diving into this genius engineering, a quick thanks to Opera for making this video possible. Opera is a free browser that makes using the internet so much more efficient. It's like upgrading from an old clunky control system to a nice modern new one where everything's just in the right place. Here's how it works. Firstly, instead of switching between tabs or windows to control music or podcasts, Opera lets you manage them from the sidebar. You can even detach the player for quick access anywhere on your screen. If you need to compare two pages, simply drag one of the tabs down to display both of them within the same window, perfect for research or shopping. Opera's built-in AI tool Aria provides instant insights without leaving your page. You can open it up with control or command plus forward slash, and use its image recognition tools to summarize visuals or generate new ones from a single prompt. I tested its image recognition with a flowchart from my PhD thesis, and I was amazed at how much detail it was able to provide about it. Customization is easy with a variety of themes like Classic, Aurora, and Midsummer. Plus, Opera automatically organizes your tabs into collapsible tab islands, keeping everything neat and accessible. For a more streamlined and efficient browsing experience, download Opera using my link in the description. Now, back to these incredible mechanical batteries. 
Flywheel energy systems rely on rapidly rotating rotors, just like a spinning top. A heavy wheel spinning at incredibly high speeds stores a considerable amount of energy, which can then be converted into electricity with up to 50 times the energy density of those old lead acid batteries. These mechanical batteries harness kinetic energy instead of energy produced by chemical reactions. The spinning rotor, which is spun up by an electric motor, can keep going for an incredibly long amount of time, because it's designed to have minimal friction. State-of-the-art flywheels only lose about 0.01% of their energy per hour, provided nothing is taking anything off as electricity. This means they can keep going for weeks or even months. Whenever the stored energy is required, the motor is run in reverse and acts as a generator. During this phase, the wheel slows down slightly and its motion is converted back into electricity. I just wanted to jump out of the script for a second here to make a clarification that every motor is a generator and every generator is a motor. I come from an automotive background and we use the word machine just because it needs to be used interchangeably. You don't need to change anything about the machine. If you spin it manually using a mechanical torque, it will generate electricity and provide you power. But if you send electricity to it, it will spin it and make it act as a motor. Hopefully that clears it up. There's nothing magical going on and the one in the NASA mechanical battery is just a normal electric machine. It just acts as a motor generator depending if you're giving or taking energy. The result is a fast, efficient and clean way to store and release energy without the wear and tear of traditional batteries. And without the risk of thermal runaway which can cause fires if the casing is damaged. They also don't need as many rare earth metals and don't need to be replaced as often. And when they do, recycling them is not nearly as problematic as their chemical counterparts. But how efficient are they? Now, flywheels might not be something new age automotive companies like Tesla would consider trying, but NASA's demands are very different, and they devoted a lot of time and energy into them in the 90s and 2000s to push the limits of mechanical flywheel energy storage. The NASA flywheel has gone through many iterations, but the latest and greatest is the G3 model. Still, the basic design remains constant. The housing structure holds the stationary components together and acts as a vacuum chamber, stopping any air particles from slowing down the rotating flywheel with aerodynamic drag. The largest component in the housing is the carbon composite rotor, which is specifically designed for its high strength. It allows the flywheel to spin up to an incredible 100,000 RPM without ripping apart. That's four times the speed of an F1 engine and as fast as a tiny precision dental drill, but on a gigantic scale. I personally think one of the most revolutionary inventions from NASA's Glenn Center was the magnetic bearings. These are what levitate the spinning flywheel, freeing it from the mechanical friction that comes with traditional bearings. Combined with the vacuum chamber, there's very little to slow down the flywheel, so it won't start discharging energy on its own. There are also traditional bearings though, because the battery needs to survive being launched into space. These traditional bearings supplement the magnetic ones to protect the rotor against g-forces during takeoff and landing but they're then retracted during normal operation in orbit to make sure there's no additional and unwanted friction. Finally, permanent magnets are placed on the narrow section of the rotor near the bottom, and copper coils are wound around an iron core which wraps around it, much like a traditional motor or generator. This setup forms that dual action motor generator and allows the rotor to be spun up during charging and slowed down during discharging. Charging uses electricity to operate the system as a motor, and discharging generates electricity by operating it as a generator. With the whole system put together, the G3 flywheel module has a mass of 67 kilograms, despite the rotor being only 11 centimeters wide. It can also store 2.2 kilowatt hours of energy and deliver up to 3000 watts of power, though this power decreases as the rotor spins slower which happens as the mechanical battery discharges. At full charge, the speed is 100,000 RPM, the round trip efficiency is an impressive 90%, and in total, the flywheel has an energy density of 33 watt hours per kilogram, which seems laughable compared to a lithium ion battery, which is approaching 170 watt hours per kilogram. 
But this energy density calculation doesn't account for the dual purpose of this mechanical battery, which when considered makes this lower energy density much less of a problem. This is because things start to get really interesting when the flywheel is put into space, where it acts not only as a mechanical battery, but also as a reaction wheel and momentum wheel. The International Space Station stays steady and adjusts its orientation in space thanks to these two ingenious systems. Momentum wheels act like a spinning top, providing stability by continuously spinning at high speeds to counteract small forces such as solar winds or atmospheric drag that could cause the station to wobble. Reaction wheels help the ISS change direction without using fuel. By speeding up or slowing down a spinning wheel inside, they cause the station to rotate in the opposite direction following Newton's third law. That is to say, if you're on something like the International Space Station, or a boat, which we'll model using this, and you had some kind of flywheel or reaction wheel like this, if you were to spin it in one direction, there'd be an equal and opposite reaction force. So if I was to spin this clockwise, the whole ship would want to turn anti-clockwise in an, using an equal force to center itself. So you can use that to change its direction. And that's how the flywheels work. Together, these systems keep the International Space Station balanced and allow it to precisely adjust its orientation, ensuring smooth operation for everything from scientific experiments to solar panel adjustments. What's interesting is if we look at how the flywheels are positioned, we can see that they form this unique looking arrangement. By using this configuration, it allows the precise movement to be controlled in all directions, depending on which flywheel is being charged or discharged. You can get a feel for this because if you spin up a bicycle wheel, it will want to stand up upright, even without any support. Like in this video from MIT, where only one side is supported and it's using a rope. With the combined array of flywheels, NASA engineers calculated that a satellite could charge the mechanical battery using solar energy whilst the sun is available, and then use that stored energy to keep everything powered until it came around out of the shadow of the Earth, back where the solar panels could charge up again. This NASA flywheel project has had significant impacts on the technology on Earth, but never actually made it to space. This was largely due to the huge advancements in lithium ion batteries that made them an increasingly attractive offer, despite the flywheel's dual purpose as a battery and controller of movement. Additionally, the complexity and cost associated with integrating flywheel systems into spacecraft, along with the need for extensive testing to ensure their performance in the harsh space environment, contributed to the decision to forgo the G3 flywheel space applications. But don't think this project was a failure. Far from it. Although NASA wasn't the first to use vacuum chambers and magnetic bearings, they significantly advanced these methods and moved the technology forward. They also pushed forward the vision of system level engineering, where combining the tasks of multiple systems can improve overall efficiency, even if the efficiency or energy density of each individual component is reduced. There are many examples of flywheels inspired by the NASA project on Earth now too, including the grid scale Minto flywheel facility in Canada. It's a 2 megawatt, 500 kilowatt hour flywheel energy storage facility that uses 10 spinning steel flywheels on magnetic bearings to help regulate the electricity grid. This is done in part using energy stored from a 50 kilowatt rooftop solar array. The future of flywheels in space is still uncertain, but it represents the idea that we can sometimes greatly improve a system by combining the job of two components into one. In this case, the battery with the balancing system. Flywheels are also continuing to advance with innovations in material science, making applications for them broader and broader. To this day, we continue to benefit from the findings of when NASA reinvented the flywheel, with more reliable grids and advanced energy storage systems that support renewable integration, reducing carbon footprints, and enhancing the efficiency of terrestrial applications. There is a lot of work going on in regulation and storage right now. The more we can store, the more renewables can replace fossil fuels as a source of reliable power. 
And who knows, we may see mechanical batteries being used in more places than we expect in years to come. As you're still watching, please consider subscribing. It's free and helps the channel a lot. You might also like some of the other videos on this channel, like this one about how engineers are making the most efficient heat pumps in the world. And as always, thanks for watching.